Hello, BookTube. I've got a Friday Reads for you. It's a bit of a harried Friday Reads because uh, I am reading a lot these days, a lot more than usual, in an attempt, probably vain, but we all make these attempts. We're always trying. I'm trying to catch up on November, nail it down, and then get a head start on December's books, and that requires a huge amount of reading, <laughs> fortunately. I have a little bit more time on my schedule on a day-to-day -day basis now that NaNoWriMo is over, at least for a bit, maybe for this weekend. So I want to show you a stack of books uh, that I am going to be reading today, tonight, all night long, all day tomorrow, all day Sunday, all day Monday. Uh, let's see here. We'll start with... Uh, Let's, let's start with the hardcovers. Uh, not that it matters to you. You don't care one way or another. Uh, the first one is, I think, coming to me late. I'm pretty sure this is from earlier in the year. Uh, this is, uh, it's by Lauren McKay, and it is Among the Wolves at Court. Uh, the Wolves of Court. And this is uh, her book on, uh, on uh, Thomas and George Boleyn. Uh, I don't know why I looked. Every man of the age was either called Henry, Thomas, or George. <laughs> I, could, I, couldn't, I could scarcely have gone wrong. But this is about the father and the brother of Anne Boleyn. Uh, and their story. The, uh, the author tries to pull their story away from the big, headlining, well-known story of Anne Boleyn. Because Anne Boleyn's father was a climber at court for a long time. Uh, it was an assiduous courtier in the Tudor world. Uh, and part and parcel of a lot of rumors and potential scandals long before Anne came along. <laughs> long before that. In, in, uh, scandals and potential scandals involving his wife and the king, and involving, of course, both his daughters, not just Anne. Uh, and uh, Anne's brother was set on his way to become, you know, the same thing, a, a power courtier, uh, if catastrophe had not in, enveloped him, and if in, in the father saved his own skin in the most reprehensible way possible. Uh, at least, that is the interpretation on the sources that I have always heard. And maybe this author will teach me different. This is, this is the first book that I think I've ever read on the Bolin men. So uh, that, that's going to be uh, foremost on the agenda. <laughs> and the next one is something we saw on this channel already. I don't seem to have a pub sheet for it anymore. Uh, but this is by Joel Wandervogel, and it is Digital Renaissance. And this is all about what the digital world makes possible in the 21st century, and I imagine, I haven't got to it yet, but I imagine that the author is, uh, the author is a bit of a, of a tech wonk, <laughs> so I, I imagine that it, the book is going to include lots of potential in the digital world that I don't even imagine, uh, and that's, that's a lot of fun. What are you doing, Bean? What are you doing? You want to say hi to your fans? There they all are. <laughs> there they all are. What are they doing? You will, some of you, the keen observers among you will notice her, a change in, her, in Frida's appearance. I noticed last night when I was fiddling around with her that her, the hair tufts at the end of her ears had grown enormous, and I didn't know where her ear stopped and the hair started, so I started futzing around with it, and it turns out her ears are tiny. <laughs> they are not huge, hairy things. They're tiny. Uh, so I took a pair of shearing scissors to them, <laughs> and now they're, they're uh, far more comfortable for her, far less itchy, and also far more expressive. Every twitch is now visible. <laughs> but anyway, getting back to the books. Uh, next hardcover is this. It's by David Price, and it is How to Get Rid of a President. Uh, it, the subtitle is History's Guide to Removing Unpopular, Unable, or Unfit Chief Executives, and it is a completely pointless book. I know why it was greenlit, I know why it was made, I might even know why it was written, but it's it, the idea hovering over it, the idea behind it, that we're about to get rid of a president and, you know, we really, really want to, everybody really, really wants to, uh, even most of his former partisans really, really now want to get rid of him, uh, is not going to happen. It's all a fantasy. It's all a fantasy. The, the system in America is set up so that how you get rid of a president is you get Congress to do it. There is no other way unless you are willing to go to the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository and take your luck with a rifle. <laughs> other than that, legally, the only way is for Congress to do it. And the checks and balances baked into the American governmental system are that Congress will be full of people who hate the president and who will get rid of him to save their own political fortunes. Except for now. Except for this Congress. Except since 2016. This Congress knows perfectly well how epically unpopular this president is. They know perfectly well now, if they didn't before the midterms, they know perfectly well they're going to be held accountable for this Nazi-like devotion that they have to him. Uh, and they're doing it anyway. Because they can use him as a sock puppet to give themselves permanent tax cuts. I have never seen anything like this 
in a very long lifetime of studying American politics. I have never seen such blatantly short-term suicidal behavior on the part of a, a Senate as I have this particular Senate. And this particular Senate isn't going anywhere. And they're never going to change that behavior. Obviously, they would have done it by now. <laughs> if they weren't, if they hadn't, if they haven't done it by now, they're not going to do it. So, how to get rid of a president? Well, okay, it's it's a fascinating historical subject, of course. It's been done uh, in in the past, and that's always fun to revisit. Of course, it's it's Richard Nixon on the cover of the book, uh, and that's always fun to revisit. We'll see what this author can do. But the flo the the implication floating over the title, how to get rid of this president? I'm hoping that the book doesn't dwell on that, because that is useless. Absolutely useless. Uh, and then the next, the last hardcover that we'll do here, so there's no derail into a political screed, because those ruin videos. <laughs> the next one is YA. Uh, this is by Aaron Summerhill, and it is Once a King. And I want to, uh, this is, uh, I, I read this on the pub sheet. This is a spin-off volume from her novels Ever the Haunted and Ever the Brave. But the, the pub sheet does not seem to say that this is a direct sequel. Because I don't think I've read either one of those. So I, I, I just certainly don't remember them. And uh, and I don't want to have to read them to read this. And I'm hoping that if it's a spin-off novel, it's keeping me in mind. And readers like me in mind. This is just it's a YA novel. I think it comes out in December. Uh, for 20 years, channelers, those are women with magical abilities, have been persecuted in Malam by those without magic. Now King Erdrin wants to end the bloody divide and unite his kingdom but decades of hatred can't be overcome by issuing decrees, and rumors of a deadly channeler-made substance are only fueling people's fears. Uh, and <laughs> I got a kick out of it. The pub sheet, one of the blurbs on the pub sheet says, Prepare your heart for the swooniest king in all the lands. <laughs> My heart is always prepared for such a king, so I'm going to give this a try. And we'll see. Uh, and then uh, the next three are, are paperback. They're ARCs. They're, they're advanced copies that I don't think I've... I've either I either haven't got finished copies for them, or I got finished copies and have glad handed them elsewhere. <laughs> so uh, the first one is by F. S. Naden, and it is this one. It is uh, Soldier, Priest, and God. This is the life of Alexander the Great. I, I don't know if you can make it out. That is what it's going to look like. Uh, and this is by uh, the author is a classicist who specializes in religion in the ancient world. And this is a religious biography of Alexander the Great. It's a study of how he adapted himself to the religions of the lands that he entered, warred with, conquered, how he did it well and how he did it poorly. I think the author's thesis is that every time Alexander adapted himself to the religion of the land that he entered, he and his men did well. And that every time he didn't do it, just started slaughtering the people who, who he viewed as pagans or barbarians or whatever, or ignored their religion or looked down on their religion, he did poorly. And, uh, I'm I'm curious to know I'm curious to see how the author elaborates on that. That is that is fascinating to me. I absolutely love reading about Alexander the Great, and that is a, both a curse and a blessing. As if those of you who uh, who really like Alexander, or maybe like other people in history like him, Marie Antoinette comes to mind, Henry VIII, a bunch of other people, Ronald Reagan. Uh, it's a curse and a blessing. The blessing part is that you'll never want for new books, and the curse part is that most of them will be just dumb, just so dumb. And I always worry about that with Alexander books. I always worry about that. So uh, we'll we'll give it a try. I'll give it a try, and we'll see. Uh, the next one is a great big thing. I had the finished copy of this, uh, but I I donated it. <laughs> so this is this is by Robert Philip. It's an enormously ambitious thing. This is the classical music lover's companion, and it is it's to or, to orchestral music. It's just enormous. It has. Uh, you know, all sorts of composers broken down by work. It's sort of like uh, the, the, the glimpses that I've had into it reminded me of the Encyclopedia of Film by David Thompson, where you get one just soup-to-nuts virtuoso guy who goes through the whole thing, uh, the whole of his subject, bit by bit. We'll see. It can't be that extensive. It would be ten times this big. Uh, but it looks to me like it's going to be as opinionated as it is uh, informative. And that's great. <laughs> I guess I want it. I, I don't need the information when it comes to classical music. I really, I really don't. I'm really hoping that it's not just an encyclopedia. I'm hoping that it's full of opinions. Uh, and then the last one, the last uh, of the unfinished copies. I just haven't received finished copies of any of these books. I don't know if I even will. Uh, this is by Jonathan Lee, who is an absolute expert on the subject. And this is finally, after a long time, his huge bio, uh, history of Afghanistan. 
Uh, I'm just noticing now that these look reversed. Oh, God. I'm filming this on my phone. Uh, one phone. I just recently had my new phone saved by the people at Mega Mobile here in Boston. And uh, I figured I would try and film on it. Now, now I'm wondering if this is going to reverse itself or if I need to do that. Oh, God. <laughs> well, anyway, you'll you'll live. <laughs> I'll see. If it's really distracting, I'll just do this over again. But this is, as you can see, this is an enormous uh, history, just a, a beginning-to-end biography of Afghanistan. And the, in this particular case, it's not so much the subject as it is the author. This, this author really knows this subject and it really writes well. So I have been pleased by previous books of his. This is a major undertaking, but I'm going to launch myself into it. Uh, and there you have it. That is my Friday Reads. It, rather ambitious, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plow through these. And uh, keep in mind what I always say. That a lot of these won't take very long. There have been about half the books that I showed you here will take me a little more than an hour to read a piece. Uh, so we've got... A Gigantic History of Afghanistan. This is not one of them. I will be reading this slowly and lovingly. <laughs> uh, the Classical Music Lover's Companion. This is an enormous thing. If it turns out to be what I'm hoping, uh, then it will take me a good long time, and I'll be glad to do it. I'll be glad to give it that time. Uh, and then Alexander, uh, an Alexander the Great biography that's, that centers on ancient religion, on Alexander's interactions with ancient religion. Uh, then Once a King, about the swooniest king in all the lands. <laughs> uh, how to Get Rid of a President, uh, except this one. Uh, digital renaissance, which involves us all. We are here in the digital world. Us more than most people, because we watch it and we make videos. So, uh, And lastly, uh, Among the Wolves of Court, uh, Lauren McKay's study of the Bolin men, her, Anne Bolin's father and her brother. Uh, so that is my... Uh, that is my Friday Reads, possibly reversed. <laughs> we shall see. I used to film on my phone all the time. It wasn't this phone. And it wasn't the stopgap phone that I used while this phone seemed to be dead. It was a different phone. But it had no problems, and it certainly didn't reverse things. I'll see how things go. I'll fiddle around. There's bound to be a way. <laughs> and in the meantime, I will wrap this up, and I will see you soon. Thank you, Book 2.